KOAM News Now on the TV app, available for iOS and Android. Right now at five, experts stress the role of a basic disaster supplies kit during times of severe weather. And we've had a lot of rain the last 24 hours and we'll have more in the next up details. Plus, progress is made on plans to bring a new entertainment center to Joplin. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. Well, Lindsay, it's finally Friday. Yes. We've had a lot of severe weather in our area and surrounding areas in yes. the past, you know, 24 hours. So what can we expect for, for today? Well, moving forward today, it's just mostly some widespread showers. Uh, temperatures have cooled off a little bit. We see Right now in Joplin, it's 53 degrees. Visibility is good. However, there may still be some fog in the areas as the rain from last night starts to evaporate. And we have east winds pretty light right now, but high humidity. Now we do have a flood advisory for some of these counties off to the east of Pittsburgh, and that's due to all of the heavy rainfall we saw yesterday and last night. And we're still continuing to see some rain as we continue on. Now, we also had some hail reports and that was due to the the pretty heavy system that we had moving through yesterday and a radar indicated tornado right just south of Independence. So we had a lot of rainfall like you can see all the heavy amounts of rain here and still some more rain to come mostly just light showers you could still expect to see some thunder in the area and uh but most of the heavy severe weather has left our area like i said still could see some thunderstorms in the area but there won't be anything like we saw last night especially out in caney and coffeeville now i'll have more updates for you in just a little bit all right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, it's Severe Weather Preparedness Week. Authorities take this time to highlight the importance of having a basic disaster supplies kit ready in case of severe weather. The Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Dunwag Fire Department advise having water and a non-perishable food, a weather radio, a flashlight, batteries, and a first aid kit in your um, outback, a whistle to signal for help medications and supplies for your pets are also important items to keep handy. Make sure you know where you're going to go when a storm hits, okay? Make sure if you don't have a storm shelter that you know of a good inside room that you're going to be having to get to, maybe have a to-go bag to, to where you can have just grab it and go. We thought, you know what, there may be another storm, but at the very least, maybe we'll be a little bit more prepared this time. And whenever you have kids or grandchildren, like I do, um, you want to be able to even be the go-to. Cash, including change, could also be useful in your bug out bag. And remember, you can find weather-related information in our KOAM Skywatch weather app. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. You can get a severe weather update sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Well, two people were injured after a wreck in Ottawa County, Oklahoma, between a motorcycle and a pickup. It happened Wednesday shortly before 6.30 p.m. near the intersection of Highway 59 and East 220 Road. And that's around two miles east of Afton. The motorcycle rider was airlifted to a hospital in Joplin with critical injuries. The driver of the pickup was taken to the hospital in Miami but has since been released. A crash in Carthage, Missouri claimed the life of a Nevada man. It happened yesterday morning near I-49 and Central in Carthage. Police say 29-year-old Andrew Corriston left the roadway to the right and struck a traffic signal. His SUV then caught fire. Corriston died at the scene. Jasper County authorities say a person of interest in a fatal stabbing investigation is in custody, but the suspect is still on the loose. They've arrested Paul Phillips Jr. of Seneca, Missouri, a person of interest in the stabbing death of Seth Langford. Authorities in Cherokee County, Kansas yesterday gave chase to a vehicle that went to a home in Jasper County, Missouri. They surrounded the property and eventually broke in with a battering ram. They didn't find anyone in that home, but later found Phillips at a nearby house. 
Authorities are still searching for Scott Burleson of Wyandotte, Oklahoma, the man they've charged with second degree murder in that case. Plans for new theater complex in Joplin are progressing. The city says applications for a $12 million building permit have been filed to construct the B&B Theater's luxury entertainment center in the 32nd Street Place development. Officials say the center will include eight screens, heated re reclining seats, and a full bar and food menu. It'll be part of a larger complex that will include a Menards home improvement store and a 250 unit apartment complex. The famous Route 66 is almost 100 years old. It'll hit the century mark in 2026, but the city of Joplin is looking ahead to the celebrations. They held a meeting yesterday with the state's Route 66 Centennial Commission to discuss special events surrounding the festivities, including selfie signs and tour stops. Commissioners throughout this two year time frame preparing for what kinds of activities can we have in communities like Joplin, like Springfield, where um, we have Route 66 running through our community. So um, this is a commission that's getting out into those areas across the state to find out what are the best ways we can celebrate. The group also established when and where they would be meeting in the future. That's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOEM Morning News, Liberal Girls Basketball concludes its playoff run yesterday afternoon. We have the details. Plus, a cruise ship helps rescue a small boat full of people who had been stuck at sea for days. And rain chances continue. We'll have what to expect with Lindsay Gaffney in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOEM Morning News. We'll be right back. on wheels serving you with love and care nourishing the homebound and older adults in Pittsburgh with the calendar to March we're just a month away from the NBA playoffs the Thunder entered yesterday tied for first place in the Western Conference with the Timberwolves. However, Minnesota beats the Pacers on the road last night, which pulls it a half game in front of OKC. But OKC has been handling its own business very well. The Thunder are 8-2 in their last 10 times out. OKC in our airwaves is tonight. The Miami Heat visit Paycom Center. You can watch it on Fox 14. Another programming note, you can see WWE Smackdown after our newscast tonight on Fox. Since their inception, the Joplin Outlaws have been led by General Manager Mark Raines. The team announced yesterday morning it has been sold. So in 2024, the Outlaws have a new ownership and will be playing in a new league. We're acquiring uh, the Joplin Outlaws and taking them from the Mink League into the Mid-America League. 2024 will be the first season of the Mid-America League. The Outlaws join five other teams from across Missouri, Arkansas, and Texas, playing a 68-game regular season, which means 12 more home contests with a new field at Joe Becker Stadium. When you come to a game, you're gonna see um, really a double A AA or triple A atmosphere. Um, so you're gonna see the in-game promotions, um, a lot of different ticketing type things. We'll have, you know, have the suites open, we'll have a, a picnic area, um, and we'll also have, we're looking at doing a kids area with inflatables. With an improved ballpark experience, the Outlaws new GM says there will also be an increase in the level of play on the field. So we're really looking for um, higher competition that's going to be at Joe Becker. You're going to see some local kids as well. And um, we've got about five to eight Springfield Joplin area kids. So when you come out, you're going to see some big competition and also some local guys that are trying to improve their skills. 
Four of the mid-American teams are from Texas, one from Arkansas. The season starts the week of May 20th and concludes with the league championship in the first week of August. Now over to Columbia, Missouri. Liberal girls basketball concludes its playoff run yesterday afternoon. The Lady Bulldogs play in the class one third place game. At Mizzou Arena in Columbia, Liberal takes the floor as they play for a third place trophy facing Delta. Opening quarter, it's a fight for the ball and Abby Barton gets the rebound and the putback. She has nine points in the game. Later in the half, Presley Holweg goes for the layup. She gets her miss and puts it back. Delta led by 15 at one point, but Liberal won't give up. Still in the first, Taylor Swarns makes the tough layup. Few possessions later, Bailey Couch beat the buzzer with a three-pointer in the corner. Liberal makes it a two-point game at the break. Now in the fourth quarter, Taylor Swarns drives to rim, count the basket, plus the foul Bulldogs within one point. But Delta plays keep away the rest of the game and makes clutch free throws down the stretch. Liberal falls just short after a great effort. Delta beats Liberal 61 to 57. However, the Lady Bulldogs didn't go home empty handed and finished fourth in state. I'll always be indebted to these guys because I think I was in fifth grade when I dreamed about coming to the final four and I didn't get it done as a player um, or as a manager, you know, and then as a player um, and and I hadn't gotten to be here as a coach and uh, these guys brought me here. You know, they let me live out my dream by bringing me here. So that's another level of endowment, you know, that I'll never that I'll never forget for them. In Kansas, three more of our high school basketball teams compete in the state quarterfinals yesterday. Starting in class 4A boys, Fort Scott falls to McPherson 61-48. The Bull Pups are the number one seed in the tournament and have an undefeated record. The Tigers gave them all they could handle. They finished the year 16-7. Du Bois Class 2A Erie's postseason run ends yesterday afternoon. The Red Devils run into Buzzsaw, known as Sacred Heart. They fall 74-35. Erie finishes the year with a 18-6 record. Then girls class 3A Gerard loses a heartbreaker. The Lady Trojans fall 32-30 to the two-time defending state champion Goodlin. The Lady Trojans held the lead for the majority of the second half, but the Cowboys win it on a three-pointer in the last minute. Still to come, we'll learn how upping your daily step count could offset the negative effects of sitting all day. Plus a check of the 70 forecast when the KOM Morning News returns. Barbecue, all new East 15th in Joplin. Register for the St. Patrick's Day free community 5K at rmhjoplin.org. All right, so we had some pretty severe weather last night, and we're still going to have a lot of rain today. But taking a look outside our 7th and Range Line camera, right now just some light showers across the area, pretty widespread, nothing too serious, and traffic is still pretty slow at the moment. Yesterday, our high was 60 degrees with our low being 53. We got about an inch of rain in Joplin and the surrounding areas. However, some areas still did get a lot more rain. As you can see, we actually have a flood advisory for some of the counties east of Pittsburgh and Nevada. So we had all of that rain mostly focused on that area. So we could have some flooding issues in low lying streets and anything near rivers. So watch out when you're out in that direction. Yesterday we also had some hail reports just south of Independence out in Coffeyville and Caney. About an inch of hail almost pretty close out and uh, that was due to the possible tornado we had. It was radar indicated funnel cloud. So it was a pretty serious little system going through Coffeyville last night around 6 p.m. But the rest of us just got some thunderstorms, lightning, pretty heavy rain. And then as we move through today, it's just going to be some pretty widespread showers. But all of this rain that we got, like I said, mostly centered right here, just in our eastern counties, east of Nevada and Pittsburgh. Um, but right over here, south of Independence, that is where we had that tornado go through. Now it wasn't, it didn't touch down, but it was a radar indicated funnel cloud. So it was a system strong enough to produce 
a tornado. It was a pretty serious event. We were out there storm tracking that and uh, we saw we got some live footage from it and here you can see where we got the tornado warnings in the area just for about 30 minutes to an hour around 5 30 to 6 p.m. So it was a pretty serious event. It just kicked off our severe weather season as we move through the rest of the severe weather. Now, starting today, it's mostly going to be just some widespread showers across the area. We have this system moving off to the east, but we will still have some showers across the region. Temperature is about 53 degrees, pretty light winds. Now, warms up only to about 54 for a high around noon and 1. But as you're coming home from school, it's cooling off already back down to 53. So we're not having a pretty drastic change in temperatures, but rain does stop eventually. We will just have some clouds as we move through the area. And we'll start to take a look and see what we're going to expect. Continuing on, just some showers, mostly still in our eastern counties. And we already have a flood warning for that area, so we could still get some more rain as we continue through the day. And you can still see some more showers making their way through the southern counties. Just light showers, shouldn't expect any thunderstorms, nothing serious, but there still could be some heavier rainfall areas. And you may even expect to see some possible rain mixed with snow as we continue on. Now there is a low risk for storms, so watch out for that. And as we continue on through today, we do see some more rainfall, mostly just for our southern counties. So the flood risk should be added on to that. Now, like I said, a low risk for severe storms today, but won't be too bad as we continue on. The rest of the weekend, pretty chilly, but cloudy. Not too much going on as we continue on, but we are tracking the next system making its way through. That will be coming in Tuesday, and we're going to have some thunderstorm chances as we move end of week next week all the way through Saturday. This is Scott with Window Express. With springtime in mind, so is spring cleaning. With our double hung cleaning and outside glass, easy breezy. Give us a call today to schedule your free at-home estimate. If you want the best for less, call Windows for Less. Topping Health Watch this morning, upping your daily step count could offset the negative effects of sitting all day. That's according to a study published Tuesday in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. Researchers looked at data from more than 72,000 people. They found getting 9 to 10,000 steps per day lowered the risk of cardiovascular disease and the odds of dying in those who are sedentary most of the day. Researchers say the findings don't endorse sitting for long periods of time, but it does does show any movement helps. The use of melatonin has soared to help people sleep, but you should keep it away from young children. In fact, the CDC reports the number of children under five who went to the ER because of melatonin was up 420 percent between between 2009 and 2020. Specifically, 11,000 children went to the emergency room between 2019 and 2022 due to ingesting melatonin unsupervised. Childproof packaging is not required on the natural sleep aid. In most cases, the kids got into a bottle of melatonin gummies unsupervised. Melatonin is considered generally safe for kids, but there is no scientific data on exact dosing. Also, dozens of melatonin gummy products have been found to contain dangerous levels of the hormone. In some cases, they contained only CBD with no melatonin. It affects about 5 million women in the U.S. Endo endometriosis causes severe pain and is linked to infertility. But many people may not know they have it. Mandy Gaither goes over the signs to watch out for and explains why endometriosis is often undiagnosed. It's been called the missed disease because many women may not even know they have it. Endometriosis does impact one in 10 women. We do think that it probably impacts more women than that. Dr. Megan Billow with Cleveland Clinic says endometriosis is a condition where tissue similar to the lining of the uterus grows where it shouldn't, like the abdomen and pelvic area. Symptoms include painful periods, abdominal or back pain during your period, pain during sex, heavy periods, spotting between periods, infertility, and painful bowel movements. 
The reason it's underdiagnosed and can take up to seven to 10 years from the initial onset of symptoms to diagnosis is because the clinical symptoms do overlap with many other types of conditions. Billow says the other problem is there's no blood test or biomarker that can detect the condition. But endometriosis does require laparoscopy or an invasive procedure to truly diagnose the disease. However, we are really working on non-invasive options to diagnose endometriosis, including ultrasound and MRI. There's no known cause for endometriosis and no cure, but Billow says a diagnosis allows doctors to treat symptoms. The best type of management is typically using a combination of medications and surgery to not only diagnose, optimize treatment, and control symptoms. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Endometriosis most commonly impacts people between ages 25 and 40, but can also happen in teenage years. Risk factors include a family history of the condition, the length of duration of a menstrual cycle, and defects in the uterus or fallopian tubes. Those who start their period before age 11 may also have a higher risk. That's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the Kalia Morning News. We had some rain chances last night and still continuing into today, but I'll have more details for you up next. Our doors, providing the best medical and dental care in the region. Quality, compassionate. Quality, compassionate, affordable care. Right now at 5.30, Franklin Technology Center hosted its annual career fair at the Joplin High School. And we're still continuing some rain chances as we move into this evening, and I'll have more details for you up next. Plus, students in McDonald County Elementary getting up close in personal education on exotic animals. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOM Morning News. It's 530. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. Well, Lindsay, most people are probably used to seeing us on the, the weekends, weekends together, but it's great to have you here this morning. And what can we expect for our weather for the rest of the Friday? Well, for most of the day, it won't be as severe as what we saw yesterday, especially out in Coffeyville and Caney. However, we're still getting some showers across the region, mostly just cloudy though, and temperatures are pretty cool today with our high only getting up to 54, so only a degree higher than what it is right now. Good visibility, pretty high humidity and light winds, and we could also see some fog in the area. Now we have a flood advisory for some of our counties just east of Pittsburgh and Nevada, and that's due to all of the heavy rainfall that we saw last night and into today. Now most of the rainfall today is mostly going towards the south, so we shouldn't see much more accumulation of rain in those areas, but there is still that flood advisory and could cause some issues for traffic in any low lying uh, ground areas. Now, also, we had some hail reports yesterday, along with a tornado uh, indicated by the radar. It was a tornado funnel cloud, so it was not on the ground. However, there was still that tornado. Now we had a lot of rainfall, still rain to come, and we got some more rain moving in on the southern counties. And I'll have more details for you in just a bit. All right, Lindsay, thanks. We'll see you soon. Franklin Technology Center hosted its annual career fair yesterday at the Joplin High School. The fair gave students a chance to learn more about careers and higher education opportunities. More than 70 representatives from local colleges, universities, career and technical schools, branches of military, local businesses and industries signed up to participate. The career fair is for our students to broaden their horizons and see see what local industry is available to them. Also, career and technical schools, um, post-secondary education available to them and programs that they can further their education in if they would like to as well. About 1,600 students at Franklin Tech and Joplin High School attended the fair. The Ronald McDonald House Charities of the four states had as a new executive director. Lori Jones is taking over the position. She's previously served at nonprofits, including the Children's Center of Southwest Missouri. So I've got a lot of learning to do and I've got a lot of listening to do. So while I, I can see some things that I'm looking forward to, to changing, I'm not in a big hurry to do any of that. So 
Um, this ship has been sailing in a really good position for many, many years. And so I really want to build some strong relationships um, with the volunteers in the community and then see where we can go. I do have some great writing experience, so I'm, I'm hopeful that I might be able to look for some opportunities to inject some more financial support. Ronald McDonald House Charities has been helping families in the four states since 1996. Yesterday was Think of Farmer Day, so the Missouri Farm Bureau and the local FFA chapters came together to support the Ronald McDonald House. The donors provided food, pantry items, and grocery gift cards to the charity. The Missouri Farm Bureau sta started Think a Farmer Week to celebrate the abundance of food and other products produced by farmers in the Show Me State and nationwide. The kids who participated look to make the most of their money for donations. Split into three groups and we looked at the wish list that was given to us and we each decided we'd spend around $100 for each group just giving back. Uh, we got ev everything from Capri Suns to Goldfish to Protein Packs and Trail Mix. This is the 26th year of Think a Farmer Day. Well, Dr. Seuss, Seuss book, If I Ran a Zoo, was the inspiration for Dickerson Park Zoo, making a trip to White Rock Elementary in McDonald County. KOM's Anthony Saviello has more. A cuddly chinchilla, a scaly snake, and a majestic hawk are just a few of the animals that students at White Rock Elementary came face to face with. Well, this morning I had some students who were very excited because they were hoping that they would bring an elephant with them today. <laughs> the purpose of these animals? To inspire curiosity and learning. Big push that we've made since we started Dr. Seuss Week is to make sure that kids get excited about reading. And so we thought, what better way for them to get excited about if I ran the zoo, if we brought the zoo to them. Nancy Weiser is the docent in charge of educating students about these animals. As a former teacher, she understands why these animals grab so much attention. That I would always invite the zoo to come into my classrooms and, and quickly noticed how much that connected with children and how I could teach a variety of concepts and skills through that avenue. And it was highly motivating. Kids really love to learn and see animals. Reactions from students come in a variety of different faces. I am so entertained by that. And, and then the curiosity. The, even the, the little guys will raise their hand and have a story or they forgot you know that they've been just totally wrapped up the entire time. Whether it's an animal covered in fur, feathers, or scales, these students just can't take their eyes off what's in front of them. Reporting in McDonald County, Anthony Saviello, KOAM News. The animals were brought as part of the school's Read Across America Week. Students will continue reading festivities today in the theme of a birthday party. That's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOM Morning News. Jordanian military carried out more airdrops of humanitarian aid over the Gaza Strip. Plus, President Biden is expected to blame Republicans for standing in the way of immigration reform. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOM Morning News. to you by AutoInjury.com and the law offices of Aaron Sachs and Associates, committed to community service. Topping World Watch, a cruise ship helps rescue a small boat full of people who had been stuck at sea for days. A crew with Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas made the rescue on March 3rd after the ship left Miami bound for Honduras. A passenger on board the ship said the group was waving a large white flag. In a statement, Royal Caribbean said the ship's crew immediately launched a rescue operation after encountering a small vessel adrift and safely brought 14 people on board. The company says the crew provided those rescued with medical attention and is working closely with the U.S. Coast Guard. Authorities from Spain say they've taken down a group selling art pieces claiming they've made by famed artist Bansky. Police in Catalonia have raided the suspect's studio where the foreigners were being 
produced. Some pieces were sold more than $1,600. Buyers from Spain, Germany and the United States fell for the scam. According to police, two of the suspects involved are knowledgeable about the art world. The investigation is still ongoing. On Thursday, Jordanian military carried out more airdrops of humanitarian aid over the Gaza Strip. The action came as the hunger crisis in the territory worsens. Aid groups say only a fraction of the assistance that's needed can be delivered by air. On Wednesday, the European Union increased pressure for the creation of a sea route from Cyprus to Gaza. British Foreign Minister David Cameron says as the crisis intensifies, Israel's allies are losing patience. He says Israel must do more to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. The border crisis is shaping up as one of, if not, major issues in the campaign. President Biden is expecting to blame Republicans for standing in the way of immigration reform. Correspondent Jeff Paul is in Eagle Pass, Texas with the latest. What used to be an almost guaranteed path into the U.S. is now being blocked by fencing and the Texas National Guard. But despite the state's show of force at the border, migrants are still crossing. One migrant within this latest group coming across the Rio Grande and Eagle Pass was even wearing a Biden-Harris shirt, telling her team he has it on so they'll let him in. <laughs> Kinney County Attorney Brent Smith says the numbers are staggering. We've prosecuted over 5,000 people for just criminal trespass, let alone Kinney County only has 3,200 people in the entire county. So we've prosecuted more people that actually even live here. Smith says images like the ones captured by this branch camera in his county are the norm now. You can see what appears to be a group of people dressed in camouflage crossing through private property. The smuggling often leads to property damage or worse. This is the aftermath of a deadly crash involving a suspected smuggler who was trying to get away from Texas DPS. We see the security threat, but yet we're not doing anything about it. And uh, I don't think American people are going to put up with that. When we spoke with folks who live near the U.S.-Mexico border, they say it's the lawmakers who aren't doing enough at all levels and all affiliations. All it is is too much politics and not enough work in the, both houses. Come together, you know, uh, both sides of the aisle and just come together and find a, a happy medium between both of them. One of the locals we spoke with here in Eagle Pass says while he is frustrated, more isn't being done. He does credit Texas Governor Greg Abbott. He says the fences appear to be working and now it's the federal government's turn to do something. Now to look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. It's Wayside Furniture Big Spring Sale and it's going on now. It's big. Daphne and Taylor and Willow. All right, so we had some pretty severe weather across the area last night. And as we continue into today, it's just going to be mostly widespread showers. Uh, right now, out in the 7th and Range Line camera down in Joplin, we don't see any rain right now. But you can still see, you know, traffic starting to pick up and we will still like see some showers as we continue on through the day. Now we have a flood advisory for some of our counties, Stockton and Greenfield, just east of Pittsburgh. That's due to all of the heavy amounts of rain that we got last night. And then on top of that, we had some hail reports with up to almost an inch of hail size out there uh, just south of Independence. That was right near Coffeyville where we had a radar indicated tornado yesterday around 6 p.m. and we were out there storm tracking that system and giving you guys live footage of it. And it was a pretty crazy event. Now we see that system made its way through on the tail end of it, we're getting just some showers in our eastern counties. And then as we continue through the day, we'll have some more rain kind of rotate back in just to give our southern counties some more light showers, maybe some thunder, but it won't be anything like we saw yesterday. We'll even take a look and see these rain amounts. This is where we have that flood warning. So in some of those areas, you could see some possible flooding on low roads anywhere near bridges or just low-lying grasslands and you might want to watch out for that 
Then on top of that, we did have that tornado warning out in Coffeyville and Caney. We were out there yesterday around 5.30 to about 6.37, and we did see that system. We gave some live footage for it. If you want, you can go check it out on YouTube and, and see it was a pretty cool looking system. Now, the tornado did not touch ground, but we did have a radar indicated tornado of a funnel cloud, but it did not touch the ground. Now, as we continue through today, starting off, temperature about 53 degrees, just some light showers throughout the area. Now it's only getting up to 54 for a high right around noon. It's going to cool off by the time you're coming home around 3 p.m. back down to 53. So we're not having a drastic increase in temperatures today and the showers do taper off as we move into the evening hours. We're going to take a closer look at that here, rotating out of the east of that last tail end of that system, moving out now, and then we're going to see these showers roll in right around uh, 4 or 5 p.m. just in our southern counties won't be too serious just south of Joplin and as it continues on pr moving pretty quickly 1 a.m. Saturday we could see some rain mix these temperatures do drop down pretty cold by Saturday morning 6 a.m. in the 30s so it's going to be a chilly start to your weekend most of the rainfall today is just going in those southern counties. So where we have that flood risk, you're not getting much more rain today. But like I said, still already in those low lying areas could be some pretty severe flooding. Now, we have a low risk for severe storms today. Unlikely that we will have anything that we saw yesterday, but you could hear some thunder, maybe lightning in some little uh, spots of that system moving through, but it's mostly just going to be some widespread showers. Cool start to your Saturday, pretty cloudy, 52 degrees for our high. Clouds do clear and by Sunday, back to sunny skies and in the 60s. So it's not gonna be long that it'll be a little chilly. Then our next system we have moving through starts on Tuesday, just with some light showers as we continue through and then it'll clear out off to the east. We'll have pretty heavy showers and possibly some thunderstorms as we move into Wednesday evening and Thursday. You're gonna see it start to pick up, yep, right there. And those chances still continue on all the way through Friday and maybe some showers on Saturday. So today, some showers as we move through the evening and temperatures drop down to the 30s. Then as we continue on through the weekend, sunny skies start a little bit cooler but it does warm up to the 60s and as we get into Tuesday Wednesday Thursday into the 70s now those thunderstorm chances do roll in and we have you know quite a few rain chances next weekend now it clears out on Saturday temperatures still sticking around in the lower 30s and on Sunday we'll have sunny skies again I'll have more details for you after the break we'll have more news for you by downloading our Touch for Wash app. Open 24-7 at our Web City and Carthage locations. You may have learned by watching Jeff Foxworthy in the 2000s, you're not smarter than a fifth grader. Well, you may also not be as smart as a seven-year-old, but this young man is trying to change that by sharing his knowledge. Lakeisha Bailey has the story. This is DNA. And this is seven-year-old Cree Carol. DNA has nucleotides which are red to make RNA which make proteins. Once a week, Cree can be found on his TikTok channel called Cree TV, teaching science lessons. Prokaryotes are very small bacteria. To his close to 16,000 followers. If this became the way for eukaryotes to fall in the multicellular life. I always knew that he was, you know, a, a very special gifted child. Cree's mother, Shay Carol, let us speak with her son before he logged on to the computer for his online classes. When he was three, he started off with um, space. So he was always really interested in space, um, astrophysics, and um, he even liked to um, explore and um, research dinosaurs. Priest teachers also knew he was gifted. So much they tested his IQ for giftedness. And after scoring in the top 2% of the general population on an improved intelligence test, he qualified for Mensa and was accepted into a special community of like-minded individuals, some would even call geniuses. He has an IQ score over 130. Cree loves to share his gift of knowledge with the world and you never know what's in store for today's lesson random facts <laughs> okay or like how to make a water gun how to make a water gun 
Yes. Well, how do you do that? I probably should have jotted a few notes down while he was explaining. It's, it's very complex. Well, some of Cree's videos like this one on matter and quarks. Quarks okay. make up atoms. Okay. And atoms make up molecules, which make up life. Make it up to 100,000 likes. His mom says her goal is to foster his full potential of curiosity and learning. I would like for him to follow his dreams and goals. Um, I know that Kriya is very interested in coding as well as um, science. If you don't mutate, you won't survive as long. It's the ping pong game. Adapt or die. It's your choice. When he's not busy making educational videos, Cree likes to visit Philadelphia's museums. We'll be right back. Many have served. Most don't stay free community 5K presented by Tamco Building Products. Register today at rmhjoplin.org. Cole Brower is back on land and she's become the first American woman to sail a race boat nonstop around the world solo. Brower arriving in Spain yesterday after spending 130 days at sea on a 40-foot sailboat. She made it around Africa's Cape of Good Hope and it navigated around the dangerous Cape Horn below South America. The 30,000-mile journey was part of a larger race with more than a dozen other sailors competing. And some of them already have dropped out. Brower, at 29 years old, was the only woman in the competition and also the youngest. She celebrated the historic feat in Spain with her family, friends, and a lot of champagne. Today is a day to celebrate the achievements of women and support action against gender inequality. It's International Women's Day. You can mark the day by taking part in a March for Women's Equal Rights or participate in a related fundraiser, festival, lecture, or seminar and post to the hashtag International Women's Day. You can keep celebrating for the rest of March as it's also National Women's History Month. All right, so we had some pretty severe weather yesterday with a tornado warning out in Coffeeville. Now the rest of us just got some pretty bad thunderstorms through the night and as we continue into the day today, we're gonna have some widespread showers across the region right now clearing out off the east region and then some more rain showers coming through the southern counties. So if you're not in those areas, probably just expect some pretty heavy clouds throughout the day, but it will be chilly today with our high only getting up to about 54 to 58 degrees, depending on you know how much sun we could see. It may warm it up more. Now, as we move through the weekend, starting off a little chilly, but the sun does come out and we have more rain chances next week with some possible thunderstorms as well. And we'll have more updates for you throughout the week. Don't drink.